In this video, we're comparing Fastmail versus Gmail. What they do well, where they fall short, and which one might actually be better for you. Whether you're thinking about leaving Gmail or you just heard about Fastmail for the first time and you're curious, this video will help you figure out if switching makes sense. We'll cover privacy, features, how easy it is to move your stuff over, and how both services work day to day. If you find this video helpful, the best way to support my channel is to sign up to Fastmail using my link in the description of this video. This is my affiliate link, which means I will earn a small commission if you sign up through it, but it won't cost you anything extra and you will actually receive a 10% discount for up to 12 months. Now, let's get into it. Why do people want to leave Gmail in the first place? Let's be real, Gmail is everywhere. Most of us started using it years ago and just never stopped. It's free, it's reliable, and it's tied into everything. Your calendar, Google Docs, YouTube, even your smart home if you've got one. But here's where things get complicated. Gmail is free because it's part of Google's larger business model. That means your inbox is being used to help Google learn more about you, what you buy, what you care about, and who you talk to. Even if they're not reading your emails for ads anymore, your data still helps train their systems. And that just doesn't sit right with everyone. That's why services like Fastmail are getting attention. It's not trying to be part of a big tech ecosystem. It's an email, plain and simple, but with great features we'll dig into later on. What is Fastmail and how is it different from Gmail? Fastmail is a paid email service that's been around for over 20 years. It costs $5 a month for one person, and yes, that means it's not free. But because you're paying for it directly, they don't need to show you ads or use your data. They say it pretty clearly, free email isn't really free. With Fastmail, they work for you, not advertisers or marketing partners. And despite being smaller, it's still packed with useful features. You can do all the useful stuff, search your inbox, snooze messages, label or organize mail, schedule emails to send later, just like in Gmail. You also get a few extras that Gmail doesn't offer, like something called masked email. This feature lets you create a unique email address that you can use when signing up for websites that companies can't link to you or together. That's a pretty cool way to stop spam or protect your privacy. Is Fastmail missing anything that Gmail offers? Yes and no. If you love Gmail's smart features, like Smart Compose, Smart Reply, or nudges that remind you to respond, you won't get those in Fastmail. Gmail uses artificial intelligence to power those tools, and it's really good at it. Those features save time and help you stay on top of things without thinking too much. Fastmail doesn't have a bunch of AI tools, but it's more about speed, privacy, and clean design. For some people, that's perfect. For others, not having those smart suggestions might feel like a little step backward. Also, if you're deep into the Google world, using Google Docs, Google Meets, or sharing calendars with friends who all use Gmail, switching to something else might feel like work. How easy it is to move from Gmail to Fastmail? Honestly, easier than I expected. Fastmail has a built-in tool that helps you copy over all your emails, contacts, and even calendar events. You just go to settings, Find the migration option, log into your Google account, and hit the button. It starts pulling everything in. It keeps working in the background, even if you leave the site or close your browser. And if someone emails your old Gmail address while this is happening, Fastmail can fetch those messages too. So you don't miss anything. You can even reply using your Gmail address if you're still transitioning. If you've set up a bunch of filters or rules in Gmail, you can export them and bring them into Fastmail. It's a few easy steps and they walk you through it. So no, switching isn't scary. It's easy and just takes a little setup time. Can Fastmail really replace Gmail for everyday use? Yes, it can, depending on what you care about. Fastmail is fast, like really fast. There's no waiting for things to load, no weird delays. The search is super responsive and you can even search inside attachments. And if you're already used to Gmail's advanced search tricks, you'll feel right at home. Fastmail supports a lot of the same search syntax. The calendar is also well built. You can connect your Google or iCloud calendars, set reminders, and view everything in one place. It's smooth and syncing just works. And yes, you can use it on your phone. 
Fastmail has its own app, but you can also hook it into the built-in mail app on iPhone or Android. One bonus here is that push notifications actually work on iPhone, which Gmail doesn't support unless you use the Gmail app. So it feels modern, it works well, and nothing really feels missing unless you rely heavily on Google's AI tools. What about spam and unwanted emails? Spam filtering is solid on both services. Gmail is known for blocking almost all junk mail. It's probably the best in the world at that, and they claim to catch over 99% of spam and phishing attempts. Fastmail works well too. Most people switching over say they get even less spam, which is surprising. Plus, their spam filters learn from you. If you mark something as spam, the system adjusts over time. Fastmail also makes it really easy to unsubscribe from mailing lists and block unwanted senders. And with features like masked email, you can shut down annoying emails right at the source if one of the alias addresses starts getting abused. So while Gmail might have the edge in pure spam filtering tech, Fastmail gives you more direct control. Is Gmail more secure than Fastmail? Both services are secure, just in different ways. Gmail has top level security tools. Google has spent billions on making their systems safe. You get automatic phishing detection, alerts for suspicious logins, two-factor authentication, also known as 2FA, and even extra options like client-side encryption in their business plans. But Fastmail isn't behind though. It also supports two-factor authentication, strong encryption for your data, and secure access on all devices. Your email is encrypted both when it's sent and when it's stored. And because they're not a huge tech company, your data isn't tied into a bigger ad or tracking system like how it is in Gmail. So it really depends on what you mean by secure. Gmail has the advantage of massive infrastructure. Fastmail wins on privacy and simplicity. How is customer support different? Gmail doesn't really have customer support for free users. If something breaks or you lose access to your accounts, you're often stuck going through help articles or support forms. It's not great. Fastmail, on the other hand, offers real personal support. You can email them and get an answer from an actual human, usually within a few hours. It's helpful and it doesn't feel like you're talking to a robot. For people who don't want to deal with automated support or guessing games, this is a big deal. Especially when it comes to something like email, the thing you rely on for everything from work to bills to password resets. Having someone to help you when stuff goes wrong is pretty comforting. What about price? Is Fastmail worth paying for? Gmail is free for personal use and comes with 15 gigabytes of storage shared across Gmail, Google Drive, and Google Photos. But if you need more storage, a custom domain, or advanced tools for work, you'll need Google Workspace, which starts at $6.30 per user per month. Most small businesses go for the business standard plan at $12.60 per user per month which includes two terabytes of storage and AI features like Gmail's Gemini assistance. Fastmail, on the other hand, starts at $5 per month for one person, $8 for two, and $11 for families up to six. You get 60 gigabytes of storage per person, custom domains, no ads, full privacy, and tools like masked email to hide your real address online. So yes, Fastmail costs money, but so does Gmail once you go beyond the basics. And for many people, Fastmail ends up being simpler and cheaper, especially for families or anyone who just wants fast, private email without all the extras. It's like paying for peace of mind. Once you try it, it's hard to go back. Final thoughts. Who should use Fastmail and who should stay with Gmail? If you live in Google Docs, rely on AI writing tools, or just like how everything connects, stick with Gmail. It's a great product and it's not going anywhere. But if you care more about privacy, want a faster, cleaner inbox, or just feel weird about your email being part of a big data machine, Fastmail is a solid choice. It's focused, it's private, and it does everything most people actually need. All right, so that's it for our comparison. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did and you wanna try Fastmail, make sure to sign up to them using my link in the description of this video. If you use it, you can get up to 10% off for 12 months. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.